So we're on our way to the last dive. <laughs> it's almost been like, like a total metamorphosis because Avalon is as engaged as she ever was and she's as committed even more so now. And then Jessica, well, she's just like, let's just get this over with. In May of 2016, a year and a half into our ongoing full-time travel life, our family spent two weeks in the Galapagos Islands, a trip that was focused on sea life and island adventures. We were so moved by the experience that we decided to take vlogging seriously after this trip. This summer, we were determined to get back into the water. We had dreams of Thailand and the Philippines during June and July, but COVID happened and we had to come up with alternative plans. Given the fact that we were stuck in Japan, we were limited on where we could go. So instead, we packed up our stuff and headed directly to the Japanese tropics, Okinawa. Now that we are here, we are starting off with learning to scuba dive. In the last episode linked above, we shared our experience with the pool dive, and although everything went fine, we were forced with an unexpected hospital visit for Largo, and he was unable to go down to three meters. Don't touch anything. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch anything. Take a long time to take a shower. You this know. is the COVID room. In this episode, we conclude our scuba diving story and find out whether Largo can go deep in the ocean. I didn't really have any expectations going into day two. I was really excited to see all the new sites like underwater and actually go near natural life instead of just the bottom of the pool. Going to the last day, there were a lot of unknowns that we were heading ourselves into. Like, how is Lago gonna do? Going into day two, I had two expectations. One, that I would actually get in the ocean water and not have any problems and not get scared and get out is just going to have an anxiety attack and freak out all over the place and basically tell the teacher that there's no way you can pass me because I just can't handle this. And number two, that Largo's ear, he had the tooth problem, which I think was part of a minor cold, would be resolved and he'd actually be able to go down into the deep water to 40 feet with us. My expectations for day two were either I'm not gonna make it or it's gonna be amazing. But I wasn't like scared or expecting it to be hard or anything. I just thought it'd be really the same. Day two of diving, and we have a healthy child. Life is good. We're falling out, we have reached disaster. Don't know where we're gonna be after. And we do it all again and again and again and again. Again and again and again and again. We're falling, falling down, we faded. But I know, I know that we can save it Cause we're like Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter I know we can save it You tired, Jess? I am. I'm ready for day two. So we have now arrived at our dive spot, but it is a glorious day. There is nothing but blue sky. There's south winds, which makes this place, from what we're told, to be an incredible dive location, just because of the way the water's clear. I have no idea. I'm learning. I'm, I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't have a clue. It doesn't matter. We're gonna do day two. Everyone's super excited. And um, Jessica is gonna get herself a little bit. She's gonna do just fine. How are you feeling, Largo? Good. You ready to take it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How far down are you gonna go today? I don't know. How far down do you want to go today? I don't know if I even will go down. How today. far down will we go down today? We only can go 40 feet today. I'm excited for today. Those are my thoughts. What do you think you're gonna see under the water? Hopefully a fish. That's it? That's all I'm shooting for. Shoot for the stars, Avalon. Way to go. So at this point we've got all of our gear set up. We set this up all 100% on our own. Can we, grad can we, can we grad graduate early? Yes. Yeah? No, well, we no. We missed a couple steps. We did you not miss a couple help. steps. It was not on camera. It did not exist. <laughs> if it's not on the camera, you don't have to. No. No, so we're super excited. Avalon and Largo so far the star peoples. So we like to say, look at it, like, like hanging finished, out like. I finished first with no complications. So when we arrived, it was beautiful. They, they said that it was going to be one of those days that um, it was supposed to rain, but it didn't. And so it was like picture perfect blue skies. Our instructor Andrea had prepped us and said that we're going to have to walk down about 50 steps 
with our packs on and our tank. So I was pretty, I was prepared for that, but I was not prepared to see so many people here. For some reason in my head, I thought we we're going to like some secret dive spot. And once we pulled in, she said, this is where everyone comes because the water is beautiful. It's a great place. It's kind of sheltered from every, any issues that are going on with wind. And there's a lot to see underneath. So Largo was the first one to go down when we actually went into the water because we knew that if something had to, if there was a change of plans that needed to be done, it would be noticed right away with Largo. Here's the visual. All of us are up top on the water with our, our masks and our snorkels on, looking down because the idea was that Largo would go first and if it didn't work out for him with his ear and his tooth, he would come back up, Andrea would take him over to the shore and he would sit there and wait for us. So when Largo went down for the first time, it was kind of like all of us were holding our breath. So my first thing in the water was just looking down and going, come on Largo, come on, come on here, you can do it. It was really great watching Largo go down for the first time. I was like, is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? And then every time he'd be like, I think he's gone further than he did last time. I don't know. And when he went down, you can just see in his eyes, he started going down that rope and he started talking to, or at least signaling to, to the teacher that um, things were looking good. And you can see his eyes just light up and he was like throwing up the, the big thumbs up signs and saying, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And, <laughs> The smile that came on his face was something to behold. It was, it was truly magical. Going down for the first time, it really felt nice because, again, my body was telling me, you're not supposed to be breathing right now. But my mind was telling you, me, you're breathing. You're breathing, fine, you can go down. It was actually really fun. The only not really fun part of it is equalization, which is like just boring. How's your tooth feeling? Yeah. 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 we did it! Yeah. We did it! Largo, you are able to go down! Now let's go find our buoy. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna pretend tough girl here. You guys all know that I was petrified. I think I was even more scared going into the ocean water than I was in the pool. Really, really scared. But the dive was fantastic. I was a little itty bitty 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 nervous going in, but as soon as my almost my whole head went under the water, I saw all the fish around and I saw how happy the kids were and I was like, I can do this. There's like 80 other people here. If they're doing it, I can totally do it. And it was a fabulous dive. My favorite part about the dive was probably just like seeing all the coral and all the fish and being really far deep. That was like, like deep under the water. That was kind of cool. We saw a ton of fish and I would say my two favorite were probably Nemo. It really was Nemo. I know he winked at me and he was like, and the other one was this rainbow colored fish. And yeah, I've seen this stuff kind of before like snorkeling and stuff, but not down deep with the coral. It was just a whole completely different experience. And. I saw this super cute little one. He was like this big. And um, he, he was a black fish that looked exactly like Dor D Dory. Dory. And um, he, he was like, he was looking at me. He was like tiny compared to my goggles. So I was looking at him. And the, word, and the first thing that popped in my head was, this guy must be thinking I'm an alien because he's so tiny and I'm huge. The difference for me between the pool and the ocean was my level of fear and anxiety. I was so scared in the pool and I got in the ocean and I was like, it's not too bad. I, don't know, I didn't really like the pool that much because it's kind of boring. There's nothing to see and you're, you're kind of just wandering, like swimming around in like a little space in the ocean. You have all this space and all these fish. Oh boy. Just like that? Just like that. Um, 
Well. An anxiety? No, no, I'm better. I'm definitely better. I mean, it's the breathing, really controlling the breathing really makes a huge difference. And once you get down there and you can practice that and you know how to control it, it makes a huge difference. At least for someone like me, who was really, really, really nervous, um, not because I'm afraid of sharks or water or anything like that, but more because of all the allergies I have and getting congested and getting, like, just getting underwater, getting congested or choking or getting vertigo, all issues that I have uh, from time to time. So I feel better because I feel like I can control the situation a little bit with my breathing. But Largo over there. He has <laughs> a new ear or a new tooth or something, right? Hi. Laura, what, water in my ear. what did it feel like when you got down there and your tooth didn't hurt? It felt good. Were you surprised? Yeah. Yeah? And did you do like a little dance down there like, yay! Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was so happy because this is something I really wanted us all to be able to do together and I thought maybe, unfortunately, your tooth or my fear would get the best of us. So yeah. we did it, Largo. Is this the big one or the smaller one? He doesn't care. <laughs>
Do you want a bagel? I went into day three feeling super confident, like I got this, I did fine on day two on both dives. I am gonna knock this out of the park. I'm not nervous at all. How are you doing, Evelyn? Good, it's really hot though. I'm excited to get in the water. It's gonna be good. Not so hot in the water. What are you getting there? Yep. Jess, how are you doing back there? Oh my God. I'm doing, I'm out of practice. Uh. Please, let me help you. We've done our practice dives. We've been in the ocean before. I think that, you know, if, they, if there wasn't a requirement for having to do like a final day, I would say that you could just hand us the actual certification already because we got this already. I mean, there's no need to continue on except for the fact that we have to enjoy this day of majestic diving. Are you going in there? <laughs> And then just as we were walking down the stairs to get in for our dive, I remembered I had a bagel with cream cheese and a chai latte for breakfast. And my biggest fear, as I've said probably a million times already, is my allergies and not being able to breathe and kind of choking down there. And all of a sudden, that my anxiety went out of the roof. I wasn't congested or anything, but I just started thinking about that. I'm gonna get under water, water and I'm not gonna be able to breathe and I'm gonna get all congested. How you feeling there, Jess? Okay. Confidence is your friend, remember that. I know. I feel like I'm a little more confident this time. So the day comprised of two different aspects. Number one is drills, making sure that we understood everything that we needed to uh, uh, utilize when we're in the water. Before each class, she reviews on land when we can all hear her what the steps are that we need to go through and all the drills that we're gonna do under the water. And the other skill that we need to do is the navigation, okay? So why is it important to know how to navigate? Because let's say that you go by yourself here, you always need to point the compass to the outside and in the middle of the dive, if you get lost, then you know how to go back to the beach, okay? okay. And she's very thorough and it's super clear. Time okay. to go back. Turn around. Turn around and you have south. I have to... Don't move the bezel because you set up only when you're going. Okay, and then I go you, 10. You move your body, yes. And then she does it kind of with sign language underneath the water before we actually do it so we understand. The drills we done under the water were pretty, pretty straightforward, but here's the thing, we had to use a compass and you know, track ourselves and turn around and come back 10 paces. And I'm like, I'm knocking it out of the park. I got the compass, I held it flat, I faced it north, and I have the, the thing that goes on the top, I don't even know what it's called, completely turned around the wrong way, facing north, but the wrong way. It's on the end, but it's the wrong dial on the end. She, and I'm like, oh yeah. She comes, swims over beside me, and she's like, Prrr. and I'm like, oh my God. We also took like the breather things out and put them back in and all sorts of cool stuff that we might need in an emergency. Basically like how to take your mask, fill it with water and then empty it. And I mean, it was all very rudimentary because I had already known it. There was, there was a lot to, to sort of demonstrate that we, we still remembered because you know you don't do these days back to back to back to back or else it would kind of be easy. So with the time off between day one and two, we, we had just a little bit of rest time in the brain that we had to sort of demonstrate that yes, we still knew, knew how to do this. And Jessica with her mask removal, I like to say that my wife is a very strong person because I knew how much this portion of the, the drills got her to the point where it just didn't necessarily make her feel comfortable. But she did it, she did it. She could, because she knew that sort of the kids were counting on her to sort of get through this. Okay, so now that all the drills and like exercises and work that we have to do is done, we now got to go in this, like basically all around the underwater world, wherever we wanted. We went to this blue cave where there were some super cool fish. And then we went to the like deepest area that we could, which was 18 meters. And we saw all sorts of coral and super cool things. We saw an octopus, it was awesome.
I knew that after this, I could literally go out to some place, get, a, get my dive equipment, go with a buddy, except if my tooth hurt, which, drum roll please, it didn't. And with that guys, we are officially done. We are certified. We are. <laughs> Yay! I think I'm the happiest of the bunch because oh I think goodness. I passed. We're most worried about you. Because I'm fine. We, we honestly thought that there was no way that we're going to get past day one with you. Oh no, the tooth thing was fine. The tooth thing was fine? Yep. Were you worried though? No. You, no? You look a little beat at this point. I'm honestly very tired. I want <laughs> ice cream. Are you going to fall asleep on the way home? Yes. Yeah. And Jess, you sucked it up. I did. And then you sucked in the air. I fought through my fears. Now I'm sucking in my stomach. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'm ne I've never ever thought there's anything I couldn't accomplish until this. So um, I'm, I'm pretty excited that I did it. And it was a huge hurdle to overcome for me because I don't fear too much. Being in an RV on a slippery mountain in Greece with snow and uh, scuba diving. So yay. And then there's Avalon who's like, let's just get the business. <laughs> let's just <laughs> annoy dad's video. And... Avalon. Make lots of noise. At this point, yes. when's the next dive? Ugh. Not for a while. So that's the end of my and my family's dive experience. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you comment about it? Let's see. And with that, we are, we're done. We are closing this episode. <laughs> Aloha Divers Okinawa were fabulous. If you want a recommendation, you're here to go to learn how to dive or even just go on any dives. And now we are certified, which means we can go anywhere we want and explore the underwater world. I'm excited for like the Great Barrier Reef. Thank you so much for coming along on this adventure with us. Um, some of you are probably like, oh, Jessica's such a wimp. Yeah, we all had our wimpy moments, right? But I fought through those fears. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and patiently await our next video. Or you can just put on the um, notification thing and then someone will tell you when our next video comes out. That's much easier. Bye. Congratulations, guys. Certified Cheers. divers. Certified divers. Bring it up, Largo. Meet us up here. Who knew we had to go to Japan to find this kind of food? I know, right? So the difference between the pool is number one, the water hurts your eyes. Hey. Oh, right. Okay, I must be forgetting so, something. Yes. Okay, what did, did I break off the BBC? I'm pretty sure you I have the wrong the breather. Oh shoot, I thought that was it right there. Happy ending, guys. Spoiler alert. Well, you're at the end now. Um. Oh, that's really sexy looking, Will. You like it? Yeah. You look like a hundred year old man. Just trying to get your depends on. <laughs> and also, will you subscribe to my ways? What do you think of that?